So let's talk about protein synthesis. These are the syllabus objectives. You need to be able to explain the process of protein synthesis in terms of transcription of a gene into mRNA and translation of mRNA into an amino acid sequence at the ribosome. You need to be able to refer to transfer RNA codons and anticodons. So let's get into it. Now, so we call this the central dogma. Um, a dogma is a, um, uh, a belief or a concept that is beyond argument. And the central dogma states that DNA codes for protein. It's a, it's a one-way process where the sequence of the nucleotides in DNA, that's the genetic code, and it codes for protein through several processes called transcription and translation. I've just added this step here as well, because essentially what happens is that the DNA is a code for the sequence of amino acids in a polypeptide chain. And that polypeptide chain then folds up into the structure of a protein. And the function of a protein is dictated by the structure of the protein. The structure of the protein is dictated by sequence of amino acids. And that is dictated by the genetic code. So that's the central dogma. That's what we're talking about today is transcription and translation. It's the processes in which the genetic code or the code of a gene uh, is translated into a protein. Just a little bit of terminology first of all. This is, shouldn't be new to you. But the genotype is the pattern of alleles present in an individual. Now, that is expressed as the phenotype, the outward expression or appearance due to the genotype. So the actual flavor of the gene dictates the amino acid sequence, which dictates the structure and function of the proteins. And we're all made of proteins. All right, so here's a really nice little summary of the process of protein synthesis. So the DNA is, of course, it contains the, the genome, and it's the sequence of multiple um, thousands of, of genes. And the way that genes, or at least some of the genes, are expressed as is in the production or synthesis of proteins. So the first step in that process is for the DNA to unzip, and a copy of the gene is made. Because DNA is so important, it's too important to leave the nucleus. So we actually get a copy of the gene in RNA. So that we these free nucleotides then line up and um, they they in in a complementary fashion to make a copy. And that's a process called transcription because it's like rewriting, making a copy. The RNA then leaves the nucleus and it goes out to a ribosome and it gets read by the ribosome and there we have these tRNA molecules that actually bring in a specific amino acid so that we get this growing chain of amino acids in a specific order and that then turns into the protein and that's what we call translation so if transcription is about rewriting making a copy translation is about changing the language so changing the language from the sequence of um, nucleotides to the language of the sequence of amino acids so we're going to talk through each of those processes so transcription then, this is about making a copy of the gene using mRNA or messenger RNA. So the first thing that needs to happen is for the DNA double helix to unwind and unzip uh, at the location of this gene. Now that's facilitated by RNA polymerase. And also RNA polymerase uh, uh, facilitates the actual making of the mRNA copy of the gene. And it does that by um, assembling these 
uh, free nucleotides, free RNA nucleotides in the appropriate order. And so the order, of course, is complementary. So the other thing, of course, with RNA is the U, so uracil, replaces thymine or T. So U replaces T. So the complement of A is now U. Um, so the complement of T in the DNA is A in the mRNA. The complement of the G in the DNA is C in the RNA. And of course, complement of C is G. Okay, so the RNA polymerase runs along the DNA of the template strand of the, of the DNA, um, and it assembles the complementary bases to form a chain of RNA. And once that's completed, it then exits the nucleus and goes and finds a ribosome. And so, of course, transcription is about making a copy, and translation is about changing the language. This occurs at the ribosome, and um, so the mRNA gets fed through the two parts of the ribosome, and the, um, the code is read, and the complementary um, tRNA brings in the amino acids. So more about that. First of all, we need to know that there's actually 20 different amino acids that proteins are made of. But of course, we've only got four nucleotide bases. So we actually have three bases um, that code for, uh, for an amino acid. In the DNA, we call those three bases together a triplet. And in the mRNA, we call it a codon. Um, and we have a, um, a complementary pattern on the tRNA called the anticodon. So let's have a look at these. So this table here, is the codons, so the RNA codons, and the amino acid that they code for. So what you'll see here is that we've got our 20 different amino acids, that's these ones here, so phenylalanine, um, um, lysine, tyrosine, etc. And you'll see that there's redundancy. So the different amino acids, we have more than one codon. Some of them we have four, some of them we have two, but there's always redundancy. More than one codon codes for a particular amino acid. But it's also non-ambiguous. What we mean by that is that there's no codon that specifies more than one amino acid. Each amino acid has a unique codon. As well as that, we have codons for start, which is um, AUG. Now that also codes for MET, so that the first um, amino acid in any protein is always going to be MET, M-E-T. Uh, and so the starting codon is always A-U-G. And then we have three different stop codons. This one, this one, and this one. All right, so that, that's what we mean by the genetic code in terms of how the, the, a codon codes for a particular amino acid. But remember, these codons are actually the code for the, um, the mRNA. And before this, we have a triplet of the DNA, which is going to be complementary. So if we have a look at translation in more detail, this is what a tRNA looks like. This is actually a, an RNA molecule. See, it's, it's folded, highly folded. And at one end of it, it has the anticodon, which is complementary to the codon on the mRNA. Okay, so when the mRNA gets read by the ribosome and the UCA comes along as the, um, the codon, we can see if we look up here, we can say UCA, and that codes for this amino acid, SER. And as you can see, we've got um, SER up here. Okay, so one end of the tRNA, we've got our anticodon, and the other end of the RNA, we've got our amino acid. So the RNA gets fed through the ribosome, and it gets read by the ribosome, 
And then um, the, so it would have read this one first because it's going in this direction and then this one and then this one. So this UCA is the anticodon. So the codon that was read was AGU. So if you have a look here, so the first letter is A, A, G, U, it's S, E, R. Okay, so that's our S, E, R again. So we can say that this amino acid here was, um, this amino acid here was S, E, R. Okay, and so then this one was read, so we had C, G, U. So the um, tRNA that had the anticode on a G, C, A would have come along um, and to, and dropped off its amino acid. And then of course the next one, and then we'll have another one, another one. And we get this growing polypeptide chain. Now, after translation, for it to actually become a functional protein, it needs to fold up um, in, and maybe even combine with other uh, polypeptide chains, etc for it to actually become a working protein. Um, but ultimately, it's the sequence of the amino acids and the things that hang off the amino acids that are very specific that actually create um, the these bonds that hold it into place and hold it into a specific shape for us to a specific function. Okay, so again, that summary, protein synthesis, we have genes that code for proteins. We make an mRNA copy of the gene in a process called transcription. And that exits the nucleus and goes to a ribosome where it gets read by the ribosome and in come tRNA molecules that carry a specific amino acid. And they deposit the amino acid and and it creates a longer and longer amino acid chain, polypeptide chain, that then folds up to be a protein. So that is how protein synthesis occurs, and that's one of the ways in which genes are expressed. Now, um, one final point is that not all cells are going to express all the genes all the time. All cells have the full genome. They're not going to express all of the genes. So we need to have a, and they're not going to express all the genes all the time. So um, there needs to be a quite a complex process that controls this process of gene expression. And um, that's something that we're going to be talking about in detail in a future video. But it's really important just so that resources are used appropriately, but it's also uh, important for differentiation of an embryo and of a fetus and differentiation of cells.